Hello everybody on YouTube. Welcome to Whistleblower Gallery. Hi everybody. So everybody, this is the first time we've done this on YouTube, but we are introducing you to a new way to view the gallery here in Brighton and Hove in the UK. Uh, we're currently showing a body of collaborator, Robert McFarlane. Um, so the body of work we're showing currently in the building is about that work that he made. So here we are in a wonderful and sunny Brighton at the moment in the UK. Um, let's have a little look outside and see what the space is like and the weather is like. This is the building. We live in a, or work in a wonderful um, coach house here in the UK's Brighton and Hove. And the building is right next to the sea, which gives you some context to as to where we are. We're just on the seafront, um, which makes this particular body of work particularly apt, as many of the images that we're showing are of the sea, of um, beaches, shingle beaches, of flint and stone, which is what we have here in Brighton and Hope. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to have a little wander around the gallery. We're going to look at some of the work that we are fortunate to have here in the building. And we're also going to talk a little bit about some of the ways in which the artist has produced the work. Um, some of the background behind the book itself and um, some of the ways in which the artist has translated some of the imagery that um, he was exposed to in and around Orford. Ness uh, in um, the east of England into this wonderful body of work we see in front of us. Um, so I suppose the best thing to do would be to introduce the book. Um, the artist, uh, the body of work that we have here um, uh, has been created by the artist for this book. Um, originally it was a book um, that was made in a very, very limited edition. A small amount were made. I think over just over 500 copies were made. Um, the artist spent a lot of time becoming very interested and um, going through all the options in which the book could be typeset and made, um, opting for zinc plates um, to be made up to um, reproduce some of this wonderful imagery we have. The original book, as I mentioned, was a very limited edition. Um, and the plates themselves, uh, the whole book um, hand printed and hand set. Um, and the edition of just over 500 print sold, uh, books sold very quickly and ended up uh, being reproduced by um, Penguin Books, um, which is a, a well-known English um, publishing house. And um, they produced this wonderful little book, uh, which is the um, collaborative work of Robert McFarlane and Stanley Dunwood. And the book itself um, contains all the relevant plates that the artist made for the original edition of books. Um, it's maybe in an ever so slightly smaller form. Um, and the book itself is, I suppose, a, um, a journey through the landscape of Orford Ness. Orford Ness is a, uh, or was a piece of MOD land now owned by the National Trust. And um, the images in the book um, show the landscape that um, Robert McFarlane and Stanley Donwood visited, um, uh, which inspired the story that uh, Robert wrote and the images that Stanley made to accompany the book. Um, the artist gave us um, some of the examples of the actual um, copy themselves. In fact, um, we're fortunate to have this little, uh, I think, a, a printout a uh, find setting copy, final settling copy from Robert. So um, some of the details and some of the images themselves from the actual book um, that we have here. Um, beautifully, beautifully um, inked up these particular ones. I'm gonna put on a slightly better pair of gloves. These, although these latex are quite good, I'm gonna put on a little bit of a better set so I can go through some of the prints for you in a minute. Um, the show is really a, um, a selection of screen prints by the artist. Um, I suppose translations of some of the work that he's done there in, uh, in, on the pages of the book, 
um, in zinc plate. But translated from those original drawings, which were used to make the, the zinc plates themselves, into this lovely set of silkscreen that we're showing here in the gallery for this show. Um, the show is called Strangeness. Um, and um, myself and my partner, Naomi, have been curating it um, even in the face of um, the current restrictions that we have on people um, coming into the building. We have curated it um, so that we can um, show as much of the work as we can online like this, live if people require it, and also on uh, link ups as well, where we can walk you through the building. And so what we'll do is we'll have a, a little show of some of the work here um, and um, describe to you some of the processes which have gone to make the print. Um, the way the gallery has been hung, we decided, the two of us, to um, hang it um, showing the uh, main images in the order in which they um, show in the book um, and finishing with this wonderful print, um, the large, um, which is the book jacket, and then uh, some of the preparatory work that um, went in to make the, uh, the original drawings. So we'll start with this wonderful piece here. Um, all of these have been framed in a very simple way um, just to promote um, the simple kinds of um, archival hanging of um, print in frame. Uh, so this is just a little conservation hang of, of print in box frames, um, simply um, attached to the, the backs of the frames themselves. And then a little bit of space just for the glass not to touch the front surface of the prints themselves. It's always quite difficult in the gallery setting. Uh, we do have, of course, overhead lights and choice of very, very many different um, glazing um, styles to um, show off work. Um, sometimes it can be quite difficult to light things, especially when you have such a reflection. And if an artist or a gallery does choose to go for um, normal styles of glazing, sometimes the reflection can be a little bit difficult. Um, but uh, it does make you work a little bit harder at looking at the detailed surface of the piece. And I have got, uh, or we have got um, some examples of the wonderful prints out of frame as well, which can give you a wonderful um, view of their surface, which um, isn't necessarily inhibited by the glass itself. And so the, the show is hung to draw the, the individual drawings started with the horizon as a, preliminary um, part of the drawing um, and each of those horizons is in the same position so they make for quite a nice set to hang together um, either in the full set of course or in individually so what we're going to do also is have a little close look we've put some out um, on the, the surface um, here the work surface just so that you can see what um, some of the print surface is like um, what we've got is um, the application of a very beautiful um, silver leaf. Um, the artist opted for some really lovely um, leaf, real um, leaves themselves. So we have a sterling silver, which makes the base of most of these prints, um, with a wonderful sort of flash there in the horizon of 23 karat gold. Um, and the prints have, in some aspects, uh, some areas, been tinted. So. Um, the top especially um, sometimes can't be seen, particularly when in photographs, which we show on, on the website, because um, it means having to photograph it in lots of different ways. But I think if I turn that print around, you can see some of the tints there that we have in the top of the, uh, the print, with particularly beautiful surface on the, on the print themselves. And then um, on this, on the larger print, in line here, we have an absolutely beautiful example of fragmentary, you know, fragments of, of leaf used, all different types of, of leaf here from um, really special metals to um, silver again and gold and things like that, bronzes, and again this wonderful um, 23 karat gold um, horizon or, or, or skyline that runs through here. Many of the pieces have got this wonderful um, blue tint to their um, to their uh, to the to the clouds um, 
as well as this wonderful one here, um, which is tinted ever so slightly over a bronze. Again, um, one of those pieces that you have to be able to see um, in the light, in all way. If you can get it in a raked light, um, it's particularly beautiful, the surface of this print. So some of these prints um, have um, tints over them. Um, all of them use um, this wonderful silver leaf um, and the gold leaf as well, laid out in hand, by hand um, uh, in sheet form. Um, and so the artist has been really experimenting with um, how the sheets and how gilding um, can be achieved in, on, in different types and different styles, including, as I said, the use of these tints. Um, but they're a wonderful, um, wonderful example of the screen printing process. And we're very lucky to have um, in the back of the building um, a screen printing facility, um, Tin Dogs Fine Art Printers, who are uh, a wonderful um, printers who um, specialize also in um, their gilding techniques. And I'm going to take you in the back um, to have a little look a little bit more at the studio and some of the process and hang primarily, but there is a bit of digital um, printmaking going on there as well. The digital side allows them to um, output their own positives to make the screens up, which we will see right at the back of the building. We can see some of the screens um, that they've made um, to produce some of this print that we have here. Quite an interesting process if you know about um, printmaking. Um, each of the individual layers that have gone into making the prints will be laid down separately. In this case, um, many of them are glue layers, um, which are taken the different foils. Um, so part of the silver will be laid down uh, separately uh, from the gold. Then there may be a separate layer um, for the tint in itself over the top of the print. Um, there may be some fixing layers which will go over the surface um, of the, the metal leaf itself to protect it. That some of those can be sort of stabilizing either UVs or um, stop the um, metal itself from tarnishing. Um, and sometimes I'm overhit with a little varnish as well, but um, you can see um, the way in which the light plays on them, uh, very much depending on where you are. Um, and in fact, this experience of um, showing it via video um, to people, um, which we've been doing over this period of lockdown here in the UK um, due to the COVID um, epidemic that's going on here, um, has allowed people to get a little bit, um, I suppose, a bit more of an animated image of the surface, and especially with this kind of work and foil um, and leaf, uh, you definitely um, benefit from moving around um, the pieces and seeing um, the play of the light on their surface. Um, we try our best um, over, the, uh, to, over the years to um, photograph the work extremely well for viewing online, but you can't really, um, you can't really um, account for viewing the things in real life, which makes this a bit of a problem for such a, a, a show which requires you to move around and look at the work close up. Um, because of the way it's been made. Um, so I, I'll show you some of the preparatory work as well as we work through um, the show. Um, as I had shown you before, the artist, and all there's some, um, some of the photographs that he took as well, which he used to make up um, some of the drawings. He worked from photography for this piece. And um, we do have some examples in the show of pieces that he made in sort of plein air or out um, or in, in situ. Uh, where he was using some of the materials he was finding around him even. Um, but some, most of the, the pen drawings were done um, back from reference material. Um, so we've got a few wonderful examples, including the very beautiful hagstones, which the artist has been um, drawing. Um, some of those are separate the book um, and sort of denote different points in the book. Um, but we were very fortunate to have the original drawings themselves uh, that he produced um, in pen on a Bristol board, which is a white paper, white board. Um, and those were then used um, to make up the uh, original zinc plates, which were then used to um, press or use on the press to make the original book. 
Um, you can see quite tight hatching, a little bit of um, overplay on, on white there with some white pigments over the top of the black. And then um, these were, of course, then translated into original positives, which were then used to make the silk screens themselves um, broken down into their separate layers. Um, and then at the back of the building here, we've got a couple more hagstones, but some of the um, larger originals. We'll have a look at the hagstones while we've been looking at some of the drawings. We're very fortunate also to have a, quite a large um, study here. Again, a, a very amazing example of some of the kind of hatching and some of the, some of the skills there. Um, these large, the hagstone, the large hagstone and the small hagstone are both available um, for purchase um, as drawings. And we do have a little study here of six of the hagstones. I'm sure some people who know are very familiar with the book will recognise maybe some of these individual pieces. Um, a very lovely little drawing. And then um, on the walls, we have some very large or the larger originals from the show. Um, and both of these pieces produced in dark charcoals and chalks. And when the artist was uh, visiting the area, um, he picked up and found lots of material in and around the beaches uh, that he was on, on the shingle beaches from found charcoal that people had used them in fires to chalk and things, as well as, of course, the mud um, around him. And then we also have a, a landscape here, uh, which is majoritively um, the skyline, really, um, a tiny little landscape, but whispering its way down the base there with chapel, the Green Chapel, which is an iconic, the, the building that um, Stanley Donwood has reproduced in several images in the show. And you can just make out some of those um, installations, military installations in the base uh, buildings there. And then this very tumultuous sky, um, a lot of graphic, uh, sorry, a graphite used on the surface of this piece, um, chalk in some areas, and darker areas of sort of charcoal there. Some of the ballistics or bombs going off in the sky there above the ness. And these are quite large pieces. I'm just going to give you sort of an idea of scale here um, and also an idea of how the gallery looks with people in it. We'll walk over here. You get an example of the size of some of these pieces here. So quite a large bit of English paper, 56 by 76, again in a box frame um, style, um, stopping the glass from touching um, the front of the, of the piece, um, trying to keep the glazing away from it. Um, and we've got to form lots of that in the drawings as well. And what I'm going to do here is show you some a little set of things that uh, we're very fortunate to have had. Over the last um, couple of days, the artist has been producing in his evenings of lockdown um, some very beautiful um, hagstones. Um, I think drawing one a day for luck, I think, uh, the artist described it as. And these have just come in um, yesterday afternoon, yesterday. So some really beautiful um, examples of drawing here by the artist. Again, this dip, this pen and ink. I've got another one here, this one's really beautiful. Slightly smaller, but again, amazingly detailed bit of drawing. So we're just slowly um, getting in a, a few of these drawings every so often from the artist. Um, do contact us if you're interested in any of these. Uh, it is a little preliminary drawing which just came in, which we had only just got hold of. We, the artist hadn't actually um, alerted us to this one. Um, so we have one of the drawings again with the little landscape in the background through a trees, which is an image type of image which is kind of well known to the artist, his love of trees, that is. 
Um, so what we're going to do now is we always try to invite people if they can um, to ask questions. So feel free. This is the first time when we, that we've ever done this. So we're just getting used to this technology. We've not really done it um, ever before. So please, you know, I can see we've got a little chat board up. If there is anything that anyone wants to ask, uh, please feel free to ask away. We can gladly try and answer some questions if you want to. Um, I'm going to take you into the back of the building um, to see some of the um, areas in which um, the prints were made. Um, as I described earlier on, um, this body of work here is all original, um, all original drawings. Um, and then over here, we have um, the printmaking um, side of the show. And these are, as described, um, I suppose, um, translations of, of drawings. So originally the drawings were um, black and white, and then the artist has had those um, pieces, those um, drawings separated down and then um, reproduced in silkscreen. So I'm going to walk you through to the back of the building um, so you can have a little look at some of the bits and pieces left over from the printing um, of the work. So the building itself is split in half. We have um, a 50% studio um, and gallery space, which uh, can be seen behind me, which I've just walked from, into the back here, which is a screen printing studio. Um, that has been open here in the building for a few years now, and we've um, joined the building. Um, this is um, Tin Dog Fine Art Printers. They produce um, different kinds of printmaking for very many different artists. Um, uh, very wonderful to have them in the back. There's always something going on here, and we benefit massively from um, a sort of active gallery in the front, always um, showing new work, as well as um, um, active um, studio in the back, always producing work for artists. So there's always something happening in the building. Um, as you can see here, we've got um, drying racks. In silkscreen um, printing, you're working um, with wet um, um, inks. So each layer of those um, uh, prints have to dry. Um, so you tend to be working from um, a screen um, printing um, bed or bench like this. Um, and as you're printing, you're working onto the drying racks. So we um, are fortunate enough to have here on the drying racks some different examples of the prints at different stages. Um, in the back of the print uh, bed here, we have a little dry area, which obviously is being used at the moment just to process some of the prints and being um, torn down and prepared um, for, for full signing. Um, and then we have um, some of the work in its production here. This studio would normally have produced um, all the work uh, for the show, but because of the lockdown and the restrictions over the amount of people allowed to work in the building, um, they're down to one printer. And so we're just, or they are just finishing the work um, in the next day or so, hopefully to be able to get it out next week to the customers. Um, but you can see here, here is an example of one of the test prints um, with a mottled, um, a mottled um, copper leaf, which was used um, for a couple of the prints. And then the artist has opted for another type of leaf. And that's it in its stages there. It's, uh, you can see some of the screens that were put up um, for some of that process. That is uh, a screen there, and I think was for one of the glues. You can see some of the artwork, the original artwork for the screens here. Um, this is um, the original um, positives, um, which were used to make the actual screens here. So these screens are, are cooked up. The area on the screens that you see that is open, which is allowing ink to flow or be pushed through it with the squeegee, is the yellow area. The brown or the coloured area is a photographic emulsion, which has become hard under UV. Um, so the process allows you to make stencils, which are suspended on the screen itself. Um, and then once the ink is pushed through um, the uh, screen onto paper, um, that gives you your each individual layer, which then go on to make the full print. Um, so here, as an example, we have a single layer in silver. Um, so that was a layer of glue and then a layer of um, foil hand applied. So you can see the sheets, individual sheet sizes. And around us are some of those screens. There's one of the screens you can see through to the back here is the washout area. And you can see some of the artwork on the screens themselves. 
that have been used to make the prints. Uh, some of the sort of, I suppose, the bits and pieces from the screen printing studio. Uh, you've got the inks, you've got a glossy blue black tint, Donwood proof, Donwood graphite line work, and some of the screens in mid use here. So it kind of gives you an idea of the fact that we are in mid production or the studio is in mid production. We're just, we've been asked by um, quite a few uh, customers when they're getting their prints. And in fact, we're just waiting for our final uh, shipment of packaging um, into the building. Um, and once we've got all of that in, um, all the prints will be very carefully wrapped and rolled uh, for the large ones. And we will get them out to you as soon as we can. Just giving you an idea of the kind of thing that's going on in the space. So I hope that's been interesting for you just to see um, how some of that work gets made. Um, so once all of this line work is on, um, these will be um, torn down and ready for um, ready for signing for the artist. And then once that is um, once that's uh, ready, they'll get sent out to everybody. So we're kind of coming out here. So someone's asking, it looks like a complex process. I suppose it's quite a complex process. Um, if you can imagine with silkscreen um, that the individual layering, uh, the individual um, colors themselves on a print will give you an idea of the kind of layers that you've gone down in the print. Um, so um, I'm gonna get from the back one of those prints um, that's in mid production to show you a close up. So you've got some different types of, um, I suppose a good example of process I could show you. Um, the original, um, this particular piece I have over here, um, not to get totally sidetracked, but um, the, um, the original drawings themselves, um, the original drawings themselves um, for the prints, um, and in line work are particularly beautiful, very, as I've shown you before, quite simple drawings. Um, so um, the drawings themselves, when before they're made into um, plates, have to be photographed and then translated into um, a digital file, which will be used to make um, the zinc plates themselves for the production of the book. So once the, the file is available then, the file can be used to separate the image down. And then as the printers in the back um, can sh have produced this, you can see this is made up of its individual layers, um, each one coming together um, with a final um, black over the top or key line, which gives you um, the final piece here. So, um, the artist has decided to break the work down into separate layers. The silver, sterling silver base, the copper trees themselves, which again, individual copper, and then the background in 23 karat gold. And so those separate layers are all laid out by hand. Um, and then this final black is laid over the top. So um, it is a complicated process, but it does allow um, it does allow for some amazing results. Um, how many layers do you need for a drawing like that? Um, well, as I mentioned, you've got um, the separate layers in foil, so you can actually count this particular print out. You've got a silver, one, you have the tree, copper, which is two, and the background gold, which is three. There's then a base tint over the copper, four, and then the line work would be five, and then there would be a sealing coat, which would stop any tarnishing, which would probably be about six. So anywhere between five and six separate layers um, of silk screen on this particular print. So we're hoping as we get a little bit more used to doing um, YouTube Live, um, to be able to get a little bit of a better handle on how um, to best put across to you the artwork and how it's made. Um, so any kind of comments on how we're doing would be great. Um, but I hope this has gone somewhere to explain and show 
and this wonderful show here in, in Brighton and Hove. Um, it's hung um, all on eye line. Um, so the horizontal line is at eye level. Um, and we've got this lovely band running, this gray band running through the building. So the building is left um, with its curtains open in the evenings. So if you are walking out, if you happen to be exercising during this time um, of semi-lockdown or lockdown here in the UK and you have a moment to stretch your legs, you're more than welcome, please, to pop past um, St. John's Road and have a little look at... Um, our exhibition through the window. We are also leaving print work out on the tabletops here with a light on them so that you can see them close up. And um, some every day will be um, showing different, every evening will be showing different examples of the prints from the show so you can come and see them. And hopefully you'll be able to see some of the work um, lit on the walls in the evening as well. So if you do happen to be passing by, do come uh, and have a little look um, at the windows through through the windows at us. Otherwise, do um, request a private link up. Uh, we are glad to um, have a little chit chat with you about some of the process as well um, as just showing you the work. Um, the gallery um, does, of course, have other pieces pieces of work by this artist. We've been working with um, it's our second show with um, Stanley Donwood here in the building. Um, I have done, uh, myself and my partner, we've worked uh, with him to produce a broad, beautiful body of work um, for watermarks, and we still have um, some examples of that um, uh, body of work. The artist, is, his background is um, in um, not only printmaking as well as uh, working with books. He's best known for his work with uh, Radiohead, um, which he... Um, Juice with his friend Tom York um, uh, for all the Radiohead um, album covers um, and much of the artwork and um, work used for promotion of the um, band has been his over the years. Um, so that's his, his, what he's best known. I found out about the artist actually by my interest in printmaking. Um, and in fact, I've met other people who've come through um, from books and some of his, um, his uh, writing is himself. So. Um, He's quite um, a diverse background as an artist. Um, so I hope this has gone some way to show some of that um, work uh, that we have here for this um, show. But do get in contact with us about anything in the gallery. We have, um, as I said, um, works, other works by the artist, Andy Donald, as well as works by other artists. So um, as we get a little bit more used to this, hopefully we'll get some more wonderful um, content on this channel. Um, and we'll be able to share with you um, some of the ways in which um, the artisans themselves have made the work. Uh, so we've got interviews coming up. We've just finished an interview um, with the artist, which is being compiled now. So hopefully that will go live soon and it will go a little bit further to explain the background of this, this work here. Um, and then keep a lookout on our Instagram as well. We go live there um, as well. And so it will be over those two platforms that we try to explain this show and get and invite more and more people. Um, we're gonna be doing, uh, announcing another live stream um, coming up for next week. Um, and we'll be continually uploading new um, segments of video onto our YouTube channel. Um, so please like and subscribe, I think is the correct thing to say. Like and subscribe and tell your friends about the channel if you can. And um, because we're only just learning about this and compiling content as we go, we require a feedback from you. So let us know the kind of thing you would like to know um, about. Um, one thing that we're really fortunate to do here in this gallery is work directly with our artists. So um, myself and my partner um, both talk to our artists every day and are in communication with them. So um, if you're ever interested in what goes on in their studios, um, ask us, we will try and persuade some of them to let us do some more interviews and show you some of their studios um, and maybe how they produce work. Um, as well as continually trying to show you um, more close up examples of work and how work is made. Um, so if there is anything that you think you would like as um, content, let us know, please, directly. We'll gladly uh, respond to it. Um, so please like and subscribe, tell your friends about it and keep a lookout for all the other um, wonderful um, hookups online that we do. Thank you so much.
Um, I look forward to some of your um, comments, please. Um, and look out for the next live stream, if you can, please. See you soon.